Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q1 FY24 earnings conference call of Idea Forge Technology Limited, hosted by JM Financial. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ashish Shah from JM Financial. Thank you, and over to you. Yeah, thanks, Yashashri. Uh, on behalf of JM Financial, I um, welcome everybody to this first quarter of 24 on this conference call of Idea Forge Technology Limited. Today we have from the management Mr. Ankit Mehta, who is the CEO, and Mr. Vipul Joshi. Uh, the CFO of the company. So I will hand over the uh, call to uh, Ankit and Vipul to take it forward, please. Thank you. Thanks, Ashish. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yes, sir. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, good morning. And on behalf of Idea Forge Technology Limited, I extend a very so uh, I extend a very warm welcome to all the participants on our quarter one financial year 24 financial mm -hmm. results discussion call. On this call, I have with me Mr. Vipul Joshi, our CFO, uh, Orient Capital, our investor relationship partner, and the call has been hosted by uh, GM Financials. I hope everyone had an opportunity to go through our investor deck and press release that we have uploaded on the exchanges and the company's website. I want to express my gratitude to the entire capital market fraternity with a special mention to our shareholders for their enthusiastic reception of our IPO. Our IPO was subscribed 106 times. Your strong faith in our company's business model, management and industry is deeply appreciated. We are dedicated and focused on growing substantially in the coming years and we remain steadfast in our mission to consistently generate value for all our stakeholders over the long term. As you are well informed, this marks Idea Forge's inaugural earnings conference call subsequent to our IPO. It is valuable to spend some time delving into our company's story to provide an overview. I trust this will be helpful to all participants. The company was founded in 2007 by Rahul Singh, Ashish Bhatt, and I, with Vipul Joshi, our CFO, who later joined the company in 2008. Idea Forge is the pioneer and the preeminent market leader in the India UAV market. We are the largest operational deployment of indigenous UAVs across India, with an idea for manufactured drone taking off on an average every five minutes for surveillance or mapping applications. Being among the first few players in India to enter the UAV market, idea Forge has had the first mover advantage and has the distinction of being the first company to indigenously develop and manufacture vertical takeoff and landing UAVs in 2009. Idea Forge has a diversified portfolio of UAVs built for multiple use cases targeted at defense and civil applications, typically known as dual use products. Each of the Idea Forge UAV platforms is tailored for applications across various industries with varied performance characteristics on the platforms. Idea Forge's UAVs operate in extreme temperatures and challenging terrains to deliver the best possible solution to its customers. Idea Forge also provides extensive after sales support, including our first of its kind subscription based support package in the industry. These products and offerings are a testament to our commitment to performance, reliability, and autonomy across the wide range of our products. Idea Forge has an in house capability to design, develop, engineer, manufacture, and support its products. Innovation is in our DNA, and we have been pushing the boundaries of technology since the inception to deliver best in class and first in class products and technologies to the market. We distinguish ourselves as an intellectual property led business unlike other businesses that rely on transfer of technology or bid to print in many cases. We have been granted 24 patents across various jurisdictions 
and 37 patents are pending which will help us stay ahead of the curve. We continue to bolster our R&D capabilities and create products that can compete in the global markets. Drones are progressively finding applications across both defense and civil sectors. The civil sector encompasses a diverse range of industries including, but not limited to law enforcement, infrastructure development, land records, agriculture and logistics. Considering the potential of drones, the government of India has a vision to make India a drone hub by 2030 and is working with various stakeholders towards this goal. Liberalization of rules for civil drone operations was the first step in that direction. Subsequently, there was a ban on import of complete drone systems, which provided a push to the domestic industry along with the PLI scheme. The recent liberalization of the export policy for drones by DGFT has made the international markets also more accessible to Indian players. The data security and reliability issues coupled with global concerns for certain geographies have opened up opportunities for the Indian drone industry. However, the nation, nascent stage and nature of this sunrise sector needs to be accounted for. As we delve into the financial results for this period, it is important to emphasize that our revenue stream is intricately tied to order execution and depends on the terms of our orders. Our business model often involves tender process with government entities. The execution timelines therefore have inherent characteristics which also differ from other industries and extend beyond our direct control. Also our revenues and profitability in a particular period depends on the product mix that is delivered during that period. This distinctive structure inherently lends itself to lumpiness in our financial performance. We plan to grow meaningfully in the present financial year. However, the traditional way of quarter on quarter or year on year comparison is inadequate to provide a holistic view of our performance. Our business distinguishes itself uniquely in being an intellectual property led business in our industry vis-a-vis -vis many businesses operating under transfer of technology or build, build to print models. Therefore, our effort on technology, products and diversification with respect to business models and geographies holistically combined with our financial performance can help build an appropriate view. Our focus remains steadfast on our long term objectives and sustainable growth underpinned by the strategic execution of our plans. Our order book as of 30th June stood at about 103 crores. However, based on the announcement we have made this just this morning, we have added about 88 crores to the same, bringing the overall order book to around 190 crores. Also, we have about 50 crore plus bids in what we can call as L1 stage with more additions to the L1 stage imminent. Our order book is a cumulative indication of the revenues that we expect to recognize in the future periods with respect to our existing contracts. The gestation and execution period varies from a few months to a few quarters depending on the customer, the program and the type of business. Coming to the financial performance, the consolidated revenues of the current quarter stood at 97.1 crores versus 38.7 crores in quarter 4 FY23, thus registering a growth of 150 plus percent on a quarter on quarter basis. EBITDA stood at 28.5 crores with an EBITDA margin of 29.4 percent. PAT stood at 18.9 million 18.9 crores with a PAT margin of 19.4%. During the quarter, we successfully delivered a large batch of switch UAVs to a defense customer and launched a quad platform, the Netra V4 Pro UAV with a flight time of 90 plus minutes. We also appointed three value added resellers for the North American geography to start building an opportunity base in the global markets. It also gives me immense pleasure to announce that IdeaForge has been awarded the prestigious National Technology Award under the MSME category for the development of our Switch UAV and the India Business Leader Award 
under the disruptors category by CNBC TV18. With this, I would like to request to open the floor for questions and answers. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to only use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We'll take our first question from the line of Renu Bait Pugalia from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning, team. Uh, and this is for the first uh, conference call that you're hosting. Uh, my first question is if you can share some more uh, input on the order flow. The, A, the order that you've announced, AD, is for order win. Uh, from which customer is this and what are the delivery timelines? And uh, overall, um, can you share some more inputs in terms of other projects and pipeline uh, which can be expected over the next uh, 12 to 15 months for us, where we are either putting in the bids or plan to uh, submit the bids uh, in the coming year? Sure, uh, Renu. Uh, while we can't disclose all the details, but uh, the uh, order that we've just announced is for one of the defense forces under the Ministry of Defense. And uh, it is uh, uh, emanating from uh, one of the uh, orders that is concluded from the emergency procurement process that had been initiated by the Ministry of Defense last year. Uh, and uh, it is for delivery uh, within, within 12 months. And uh, the uh, L1 pipeline, like I had mentioned, uh, which sort of uh, is again expected to close uh, very soon, uh, is also going to be uh, needed to be executed uh, within this timeline in terms of uh, delivery uh, from the point of view of uh, uh, the order receiving and uh, delivery timeline from that perspective. So, and both of these projects including L1 would be broadly executed in the current fiscal year itself? Uh, they, uh, so, that is something that we are preparing for uh, and uh, you know, we will keep updating as and when uh, some of these deliveries get started. Yeah, Renu Vipul here. Uh, yeah. Basically, the overall timeline is 12 months. Uh, there are certain uh, lot sizes that are there as part of the order, which has its own gestation period, and certain lot might spill over in the subsequent financial year, but uh, we, we are right now into the planning phase as to how the deliveries would happen on these lot sizes. Sure. Um, secondly, uh, recently there was this uh, China putting restriction on exports of certain uh, components required for UAV. Uh, how do you think this will impact the supply chain of components uh, for UAVs in India and for Idea Forge? And does this also benefit because uh, we have significantly higher localization versus peers? So will that put uh, Idea Forge in relative advantage versus the other peers? Yes, Renu. So, uh, you know, this restriction particularly emanates from a data security standpoint. And Idea Forge, uh, for, for a very long time, has ensured that, uh, you know, our data related uh, subsystems do not emanate from the uh, qualified geographies, which is also uh, something which uh, we planned for as it was a restriction that was emanating in the U.S. market as well, where they have a very clear policy called National Defense Authorization Act, under which they do not allow drones that contain components which carry data from uh, certain geographies uh, to be inducted into their uh, forces. So. Uh, this is absolutely a, a welcome move and uh, as such from our standpoint uh, does not have any impact. From an industry standpoint, uh, it is uh, definitely something that may impact because we do uh, see a lot of, uh, you know, players using uh, components which are related to data with, uh, uh, you know, Chinese origin. So that is something that uh, will have to be worked on by the industry because uh, I think for national security, it's a very, very important move as well. And uh, lastly, um, if you can also share some updates on how has the working capital uh, situation been? Last year, we had a bloat on receivables and inventory both at the end of the year. So how is it looking at the end of 1Q now? And broadly, from an analyzed perspective, um, what should be the targeted range of the networking capital cycle? So, uh, see, target range, as we had disclosed earlier, also would hover around our 200 days uh, networking capital cycle. Right now, uh, we are 
hovering closer to that number. And uh, even our receivables, we have done large part of our collection, which was due from last year. And at today, uh, you know, our inventory cycles that from what it was 205 days for March closing has uh, come down to 85 days for quarter numbers. Got it. And lastly, if I can ask one more, uh, any specific guidance that you would like to give uh, for fiscal 24 on revenues and the operating margin size? So, Renu, like I mentioned, uh, we do plan to grow uh, meaningfully in this year, but we are not giving any specific guidance at this point in time. Sure. Thank you and all the best, team. Thank, Thank you, Renu. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Bala Murali from Oman Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning. So, I would like to know about the EBITDA margins, what could be the sustainable range because in the last quarter and Q1 of FF23 and this quarter, we have a different set of margins. So, could you please uh, uh, throw some light on the margins, uh, how it would be in the upcoming quarter? Sir, in terms of uh, EBITDA margin, uh, like I said, uh, you know, our performance when tracked quarter on quarter will have, uh, you know, lumpiness in it because of the way our orders need to be shipped, uh, not from the point of view of our ability to execute, but uh, mainly from the point of view of uh, the, uh, you know, the way the orders are structured uh, as well. So, from that perspective, uh, we do expect that uh, quarter on quarter there will be variability, but uh, we expect to uh, you know, do better, uh, you know, overall and on a yearly basis. Like I mentioned, we are expecting to grow meaningfully this year from that point of view. Okay, and uh, one more thing on the woman uh, business. Uh, so, what is the uh, uh, strategy over there and uh, in which areas you are working on? So, you're talking specifically about the Oman uh, business? Yes, it's Oman. Yes, sir. So, we have made some deliveries in the Omani geography, uh, but I cannot uh, disclose the specifics uh, due to the nature of our customers over there. And uh, we are working on a pipeline in that geography as well. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Sagar Gandhi from Future Generally Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning team and uh, thank you for the wonderful introduction and uh, congratulations on great listing. My question is, uh, because you cater mostly to uh, defense uh, arena, can you mention large programs that you believe uh, are in the pipeline over the next three to five years and what is your total addressable uh, market opportunity there? Sir, in terms of uh, the overall market opportunity, uh, if you if we look at the way the government has been uh, procuring drones, particularly under the emergency uh, programs, and last year we saw a large number of contracts, uh, we do expect the momentum to continue in terms of the demand for drones from the MOD side. There are a large number of make programs also, wherein uh, make two particularly, wherein the government has expressed the desire to induct certain specifications of UV systems. Some of them fall under the uh, tactical grade uh, development that uh, we had mentioned as a part of our uh, strategy overall. And uh, those are some large programs where uh, the indicated numbers can be substantial. Uh, I cannot uh, particularly estimate a specific value to it, but uh, from all, uh, you know, all our simulations, it's definitely quite substantial in terms of those make two programs. Plus what we also understand is that uh, Overall, the penetration of the technology has been very, very low in our forces historically. So, the uh, appetite to scale this to the full deployment scale of our armed forces is definitely something we are uh, quite excited about and, uh, you know, all the emergency procurements and subsequent plans are pointing in that direction. That's basically how the overall market opportunity is, uh, you know, playing out in front of us at this point. Thank you. And uh, my next question is, uh, can you also highlight uh, on the civil side what opportunities you are targeting and uh, uh, the opportunities that you are targeting on this side, uh, are they as uh, large, uh, I mean addressable opportunity because uh, the competitive landscape there is different. So how are you going to approach this space? Sure, sir. So from a civil side, we are looking at law enforcement uh, and uh, various security forces as one large uh, bucket of opportunities where we play quite a bit. 
the other uh, bank of opportunities is for mapping applications particularly where uh, land surveying is involved that is also a very large and uh, immediate opportunity where a lot of action is happening on ground as well as the opportunities in certain other segments with respect to mapping and inspections are uh, growing uh, increasingly from that point of view and also the plans that we have with respect to looking at logistics as an opportunity particularly for middle mile operations as we disclose as one of our strategies is again an area we expect uh, to be able to address a very large uh, and sizable market opportunity overall if you look at the global trend it is expected that civil use of drones will overtake uh, defense use uh, in about 2 uh, to 3 years time frame and therefore uh, you know if india were to follow suit uh, even if with a lag we do expect that civil uh, side of the opportunity will also be large however we may not be addressing all of the buckets in the civil side of opportunity Thank you. Thank you so much for the answer. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Santosh Yellapu from Asian Market Securities. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, first, congratulations on the new order win. So, I have few questions. First, uh, oh, what is the competitive scenario for this uh, uh, new order that we have won? so uh, you know typically what happens in uh, our tender uh, procurement uh, is that we have a large number of bidders and uh, these bidders have to technically first qualify on paper and then once they are technically qualified on paper we have to actually go and do demonstrations in the real world conditions and uh, demonstrate compliance to each and every line item as far as the uh, uh, you know specifications is concerned and only after qualification under those demonstrations and certain other tests and processes uh, a few bidders remain and then uh, whoever is the uh, remaining bidders is where the l1 opportunity uh, comes up and then uh, we are awarded the contract so it goes through the standard tendering process with uh, special emphasis on field uh, trials because uh, in particularly the kind of mission critical environments that our forces operate in it is not a very uh, straightforward uh, way to Uh, build technology that can survive in those environments which is an area which where uh, idea forge has uh, over the years focused heavily on and is able to provide mission critical uh, systems for uh, even extreme temperature environments that exist in our operational conditions understood sir secondly uh, the bid pipeline what were the quantum of bids where you have participated in the tenders as of now versus a year back approximately Uh, we, I don't have that information ready, and uh, we typically do not go into the depths of our pipeline at this point in time. But uh, as and when we are uh, able to do that, we will definitely. If not the numbers, sir, I'm just trying to get a get a sense of the flare. Is it uh, higher uh, substantially, or is it lower? How to read? I'm, I'm yeah, it is to... definitely it is definitely growing. Uh, that part is definitely growing because the demand is uh, growing quite a bit. Okay, sir. So, uh, lastly, uh, one small point. Uh, Daksha reported an order win last week. Uh, being a late entrant, they are able to uh, get an order in the logistic drone space without having the product ready. If my understanding is right, uh, may I? You know, I would like to get a sense. Where do we stand in terms of the opportunity of for the logistic drones? How long do we need to wait? Or uh, any views or comments on that, please? so our focus as far as logistics is concerned has actually uh, like we had mentioned as a part of our strategy as well is largely to look at middle mile drones that indicate a payload size of 100 plus kg to 100 plus kilometers so that's been our uh, that's our approach so we will probably like i mentioned not be playing in each and every segment uh, and therefore it may not be a market opportunity that we are directly targeting at this point in time Sir, one small clarification. Lastly, sir, you just mentioned that under the National Defense Authorization Act of US, certain uh, components are not being allowed to to be sourced from certain countries. At yeah. this moment, uh, I think we are still importing the com- some of the components, right? So, is it uh, is it fair to say that at this moment our product may also not qualify because of this strict law in the US? 
or we would like to wait for a uh, change in the uh, component sourcing strategy have more localized content and then go aggressive into the market how how should i read into this particular statement of yours thank you no we we actually qualify that's what i'm saying we have been we are compliant to that uh, that term. we already don't source it from the geographies that are covered in that uh, okay okay thank you sir all the best thank you thank you, thank you. we have a next question from the line of dipen vakil from incred equities please go ahead thank you for the opportunity and hosting this call so my uh, first question is mainly on uh, the opening commentary that you made that uh, our revenue and profitability depends on the product mix so so is it possible for you to throw some light on the what kind of product mix was there in first quarter and maybe on fy 20 itself so uh, that is something in terms of uh, quantity and uh, mix is something that we are not uh, you know disclosing at this point in time because based on the opportunities that we are uh, delivering and the opportunities that we bag uh, we cannot uh, really create a, a trend in that one sense at this point in time from that data as we grow uh, over a period of time we should we should have more uh, you know uh more disclosures in that direction but at this point in time we are not disclosing those numbers uh sure so uh, my next question is mainly on the our import level so so what has been our import so in the uh, first quarter and uh, how do you see the market scenario when it comes to import as to do you see see any challenges uh, in in the front wherein uh, uh, the scenario will change in near future in terms of uh, imports uh, i don't have a specific number uh, for the first quarter but if you look at the last financial year uh, and the years before that our imports were uh, less than 25% of our uh, revenue so uh, therefore overall we do not expect that uh, to be a there to be a big shift in that over in that month and so all all the components and uh, sub components we are either in, uh, procuring it from domestic sources or developed it in house is that correct yeah a large part is being uh, either sourced in india or is developed okay so uh, my last question so you mentioned uh, uh, auto book side that uh, there was defense and civil so how much would be the bifurcation between the government and private auto so at this point in time i think defense and civil is what we have currently computed which stands at about uh, you know as we disclosed in the press release i think 95% odd is uh, defense and 4 4 odd percent is uh, civil so you know we can definitely get a sense that uh, defense is all going to be government in that one sense Okay, so on civil side, do we have any? Uh, so majorly, our uh, uh, so our clients are from government or even from private sources. It's both government and private. Okay, sure. So that's all from my side, and all the best for Part Twenty Four. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Aman Dugar from Nuwama Wealth. Please go ahead. Uh. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, this is Aman Dubey. Congratulations on your Q1 results. Uh, I wanted to understand, sir, uh, like your uh, revenue from the domestic and from the international. As you have like said, uh, three value-added resellers in USA also. So, from when can we expect like order inflows from uh, like USA and Oman, and like what kind of size are we talking about? so uh, you know this year we will start seeing some entry in that bucket uh, because uh, it takes uh, like you recently saw that the government has just opened up the policy a little bit on the import side which still has a process that one has to take care of so as the export side sorry so as the uh, you know capability to do demonstrations as the base in the us with respect to demos and other areas increases over the next few months we will be able to give a more clearer picture but uh, this year we will start seeing the build up of revenue there uh, at the early stages but next year onwards we should start seeing uh, you know relatively more meaningful results on that side uh, and and as a second question sir so uh, how does the management look at commercial usage of drones given the rule about like line of sight limit so many use cases right around mapping inspection uh, 
basically which are the current large volume of uses even if you look at uh, agri spraying in agriculture and uh, you know, mapping in agriculture etc these kind of uses can be uh, fairly well scaled even in uh, visual line of sight operations but uh, logistics and some of the other applications in that direction will necessarily require beyond visual line of sight for uh, the kind of operations they are uh and the and very last question so uh, basically like the company has been uh, uh, in its very high capacity utilization so if we see a increase in the order book in the coming years are you expecting any capex to do and like any uh, numbers that you want to provide so uh, thank you for the question uh, basically right now what you see is the utilization is only a single shift utilization for the given capacity in the same facility we have still scope of going for further two shifts so we are not envisaging any capex investment uh, even if the order sizes changes okay okay thank you so much thank you we have a next question from the line of ankit pandey from quent money managers please go ahead morning uh, thank you for taking my question um i suppose uh, many congratulations are not a uh, fantastic listing and uh, good prospects i i just wanted to hear a little bit more articulation uh, from you ankit on uh, the kind of two areas that we are sort of venturing in i mean uh, uh, sort of in venture stage uh, of course the drone as a service and the second one is the us i mean briefly touched upon in the last question but the us uh, reseller uh, agreements as such or three value added uh, resellers what exactly do you mean by value added i mean are you going to be billing straight to them for instance that will clarify some of that but if you could just break down the nature of those agreements and of course the drone as a service asset yeah thank you sure so from the point of view of value added resellers typically what uh, happens is that uh, you know the value added resellers are the ones who get the purchase order from the end customer and they place a back to back uh, order on to us and we are uh, basically then supplying to the value added reseller to deliver to the end customer so that's typically how the uh, process works uh, and the value added resellers add uh, a few layers of their own with respect to support with respect to training and other aspects uh, wherein they would be also sometimes system integrating uh, other uh, subsystems components to deliver the full solution to the end customer so that's typically the nature of the relationship with uh, these people that we have both in india and outside but in terms kind of, of liability or defect uh, management would that fall uh, on to you ultimately or will that be handled by them always so uh, there is a certain level of support that they handle and then uh, beyond that level of support we have to handle let's say l1 l2 support they will handle an l3 l4 we will have to handle right right perfect Perfect. And in terms of drone as a service, it's a model that uh, we are actively pursuing at this point in time. It's again in a very uh, early stage where we are trying to look at what are the services that can be delivered uh, consistently with very high utilization of the platforms, and uh, wherever we find a high asset utilization and how to increase the asset utilization is the area that we are exploring aggressively in that domain. and uh, we are seeing some green shoots on ground in terms of what those areas could be we are looking to uh, get it to a minimum scale after which we can uh, get to a lot more detail in conversation in that direction i understand i understand okay thank you thank you very much all the very best to you thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen to ask a question please press star and one on your phone now We'll take a next question from the line of Colonel Sarjit Yadav from Mount Indra Finance. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, congratulations on the blog that you're spending the order today. Uh, I just want to know from the you know what to answer in about twenty five percent of votes. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Can you use your time. handset more, please? Your voice is not very clear. Is it better now? Uh, you're using your handset mode, right? No, I'm not using. Is it is it better now? Uh, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, I'm asking, what is the uh, percentage of digitalization in your products, uh, including the domestic domestic uh, procurement and the imports? 
See, the overall indigenization in our products has been above uh, most of the thresholds that are required for uh, deliveries to defense or to uh, civil users fell above uh, 60% in most cases. So that way uh, we have done a lot of work uh, over the last uh, 16 years to either build the technology ourselves and which is where I was distinguishing Ideaforge from many other businesses where the intellectual property is ours. For example, if uh, one were to buy an autopilot from uh, some other vendor, they would pay for the uh, hardware as well as the software that goes along with the integration uh, requirements. Whereas uh, at Ideaforge, we build our own autopilot. So we just essentially pay for the you know components that go onto the board and the board itself, but nothing else, everything else is our own development. So our level of indigenization in most of the subsystems is of that nature and that allows us the overall, uh, you know, you can say the uh, flexibility to be able to do better gross margins on the product as well as to have much higher indigenization in our setup. Okay. Nice. So, uh, can you give us a percentage of split between the domestic and the export uh, in the order book? Uh, right now, we do not have a substantial exports order book. Like I mentioned, we are currently building, building, building towards that. We have a subsidiary in the US. We've been working towards building the ability to get our systems in that geography because exports uh, for our systems and drones in general falls under SCOMET category. So we need to take SCOMET licenses to be able to do demonstrations and uh, to be able to ship systems to the uh, in global markets. With the recent opening up on the civil side for international use, uh, we are expecting that uh, that will accelerate the ability quite a lot and will allow us to build the opportunity more effectively uh, going forward with greater velocity in the near time. Okay, so, so the last question, uh, any uh, of the orders which has a repeat clause and 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 or the ANC uh, component attached to it? We, we do have uh, such orders and uh, we, we find, uh, you know, at times customers uh, leaning on to the uh, repeat clause as well. We've had that, uh, had that success in the past. The second part of the question, do you have like a model of ANC uh, attached in the orders or a, or do you plan to have ANC for the products which are being so, delivered or you have delivered so far? Right. So, we do have ANC on some of our orders which we are currently also servicing and billing. Uh, there are many orders where the upfront purchase of ANC does not happen but uh, towards the closure of warranty or after uh, the closure of warranty, we do get into ANC contracts with our customers. Uh, and uh, like I mentioned, we also offer a first of its kind in the industry uh, support model where uh, we assure even greater availability for the user uh, for their systems with active support from our side. Okay, thank you. So, I just... Kanal Yadav, I request you to join back the queue, sir. Okay, sure, sure. I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Jatin Jadav from Sahasrar Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Now, first of all, congratulations and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I just wanted one clarification before I ask questions. The Q1 revenue mix is 96% civil or defense? 96% uh, defense. So I think there's a mistake on the no, presentation, page 6. But otherwise... Um, I wanted to understand uh, which are the highest, uh, so the defense gives the highest margin, am I correct in assuming that? Um, not not really. It, it is not like, uh, you know, one or the other gives us higher margins. It really depends on the uh, nature of uh, contract and the product we are, uh, you know, supplying under the same. Okay. And uh, second question was since there is a the, like pretty much every company, there's so many smaller companies coming up in the drone segment. I wanted to understand what is, as you mentioned, you have a lot of IP rights. So what is what is your USP exactly? Like if a particular, let's say for mapping, you are providing one drone and another company is also providing a similar drone. What is the difference? Like why would they choose idea over the other is the question. 
So typically the performance of our drones and uh, the reliability that our systems offer and the amount of support we give and the autonomy with which the system operates, uh, they are typically the areas where uh, we distinguish ourselves from uh, many of our competition. Uh, to just give you a sense, uh, for example, the flight time that the system offers, right? Uh, typically, our flight times for the same weight would be, uh, you know, higher than uh, what is usually available in the market. When it comes to uh, reliability, just to mention that our customers have done over 375,000 plus operations on our drones. And all of that experience of having our customers operate and utilize our systems is where we, uh, you know, excel. Okay. So, so that is something which uh, is built into the reliability of our systems. So, and thus the systems also behave with a lot of autonomy to ensure that uh, users, uh, when the system is in the air, the system takes care of itself rather than the user needing to make, uh, you know, manual judgments that may or may not pan out when the system is slightly far away from the user. So a lot of that is where we distinguish ourselves and that is all possible. Uh, the performance delta that we offer, the reliability that we offer and the uh, autonomy that we offer in terms of both safety and operational features that we have on the system is all because of a lot of in-house developed technology that we have filed patents on. And we keep building more and more depth in the solution that we offer to the end customer. Okay, so the so the patterns you are talking about, you have them on both hardware and software side. Yes, yes, yes. So we have features like, uh, for example, where the user can uh, you know plan their mission even before they step out from their operational uh, you know from their location, and their entire mission can be planned, including. The fact that uh, the user can know from where to look at the target from, uh, even before they stepped out from their location. So uh, that really eases the operational uh, stress on the user, reduces the cycles that they may end up burning. Uh, and therefore, that is something which, uh, again, helps us tremendously in giving a good user experience to the user. All right, all right. Um, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much, and uh, all the best for the coming year. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Renu Bait Pugalia from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hi. Uh, just a follow-up question from my side. Um, can you share some inputs and details in terms of um, where are we in terms of um, uh, scaling up the R&D team and the investments uh, towards these uh, made to programs which we have planned? Right, Renu. So, like we mentioned in the updates, we have initiated our development in that direction. I think our R&D team from uh, the uh, March numbers uh, has already uh, grown to about 140 people uh, plus. Uh, from the last number, I think we have addition of about uh, 20 to 20 or 20, 25 people. So, that means we are continuously staffing ourselves to be able to uh, build these areas and to be able to deliver on the uh, main two programs and other uh, developmental initiatives that we have on board as a part of our strategy. And internally, what timelines do you think will be able to come up with the probable solutions for tactical products um, in the, for the main two programs? So we are currently uh, trying to track them based on the uh, timelines that we have on the programs themselves. Typically, a make to program when the award happens, they give us about uh, 12 months plus time to be able to come up with the prototype uh, of the system that can deliver on the specifications. Sure. And uh, indicatively, what is the kind of R&D spend that we're targeting for the current fiscal year, uh, which would probably be capitalized in line with our policy? I don't have the uh, exact number off the head, Renu. We can subsequently, uh, you know, talk about that. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Nandini. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Rajesh VC from Arlang CEO India Private Limited. Please go ahead. Hello. Are you, are you, uh, is it audible? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. So thank you and. Uh, 
for giving the opportunity and also a very good listing you know as an ipo and also uh, good to hear us that you are getting some good orders as well so as a retail investor so i just have one question based on the financial statement that was released yesterday um you know we can see the in uh, improvement in uh, the uh, the you know the uh, what do you say the profits from quarter to quarter but year on year it has gone down and the expenses also has increased this the, in the june uh, for this quarter compared to um, year, uh, both quarter to quarter and also uh, year on year so and uh, what do we take forward on on this uh, aspect here thank you sir uh, um Uh, thanks for the question i think uh, what is important to note is that in our uh, quest for uh, growing we will definitely have to uh, improve uh, increase our expenses so you will uh, definitely see that increase because of our quest for growth at the same time like i mentioned we do expect to grow meaningfully overall in this year so uh, you know quarter on quarter some of this tracking may not be uh, very very uh, clear in terms of that uh, trajectory this point in time okay thank you yeah thank you we have a next question from the line of sagar gandhi from future generally life insurance please go ahead yeah so sir my question is on the competitive landscape so if you can please uh, try and highlight uh, who are your current competitors in the defense arena and how do you uh, project or put yourself in that space and what are the opportunities that uh, you see i mean there have been lot of uh, uh, small and mid sized defense companies which do tot from drdo and uh, other uh, similar institutions and do a lot of uh, uh, i mean building so uh, is then is that an opportunity for you also and uh, how do you intend to capitalize on this uh, entire uh, you know growth in defense spend yeah Right. So, from the point of view of uh, the competitive landscape, like I mentioned, ultimately we have to compete on specific performance parameters when it comes to opportunities, and uh, particularly in terms of our ability to do high altitude uh, operations, is something that has really given a lot of leg up to uh, you know our, op- our operations as a country in that area. because of uh, the capabilities we built for those kind of operations in general the performance on our platforms is uh, something that we distinguish ourselves with and uh, that performance is available in fairly uh, extreme temperature conditions so that again creates a lot of distinguishing and differentiating factor on ground ultimately uh, you know more often than not the ability to deliver in the real world during the uh, trials and during operations is what uh, is very very critical in this space so while a lot of um, competition is there but uh, the operational experience like i mentioned uh, previously that we have uh, genuinely gives us a leg up uh, when we go out there in the field okay so if i have to put it this way that if there is 100 rupees of ordering uh, from the indian defense side uh, what will be your market share currently so i uh, i cannot specifically uh, suggest that market share because the very slice and dice it also differs for example if there are areas where we have not uh, areas where we have not basically bid or it's not a product category that we are into uh, then the market size will be different versus in categories that we are into the uh, overall uh, you know uh, market size or market share will be different but for areas that uh, particularly pertain to high altitude operations or uh, in general operations around small uavs uh, we do uh, come up to be uh, a very very significant contributor to that i think to the product okay i know and on the tot opportunity that may come up from let's say DIY. sir anywhere where we find that technology or partnerships will help us improve the metrics of performance reliability and autonomy we remain extremely open to collaborating and uh, creating the opportunity for the end customer to experience a superior product so our focus always is to better the areas that we specifically uh, work towards in terms of uh, technology growth uh, from the customers experience point of view yeah, so do you see any such opportunity coming over the next uh, let's say 1 to 2 years 
in terms of collaborating with other partners and other players in the industry yes we are definitely actively looking for such uh, collaborations and uh, even investments for that matter uh, from the point of view of uh, uh, drdo uh, and technology transfer we haven't specifically come across Uh, an area that we are actively looking at but we remain open to the same as well we have in fact worked with drdo in the past where we have helped uh, you know uh, delivered products to them and help them also work on uh, certain programs uh, with our technology thank you thank you thank you we have a next question from the line of rohit maheshwari from tata aig general insurance please go ahead hi hi ankit thanks for the opportunity hi okay yeah my question is that uh, if you see in fi 22 uh, the market price was 43 million dollars so can you give a sense uh, what will be the market price in fi 23 and so uh, the fi 22 number was essentially uh, derived from the pli data that the uh, government had released uh, so that you we have a very accurate estimate Uh, similarly we are awaiting uh, you know uh, sort of announcement of the numbers again from the government side on the pli so we'll probably have to wait for those uh, more accurate numbers at this point in time okay my second question is if you see one of uh, the competitors raksha currently has gone to create the medium attitude of drones so the army uh, we were the part of uh, the contract or we we had bid for it or it does not apply to us no sir it did not apply to us because we we are not present in that uh, category of drones at this point in time okay. uh, but in fi 21 uh, we had a fi 22 i guess we had a decent order book of uh, in fi 22 we had a decent order book in fi 23 we had a debt so uh, Can you give us sense what is the total current budget of uh, defense what they are procuring uh, drones in a year and how it is moving in the last two three years and how you see in the next two three years? So what is happening is that a lot of procurement uh, on the government side right now is on uh, routed for drones particularly on the emergency procurement side which is where some of these opportunities and orders are coming from. and that has seen a massive leg up in the last financial year the closure of contracts is actually happening actively at this point in time in this financial year uh, ideally it was supposed to happen towards the end of last financial year but uh, because uh, there was a very large number of such programs i think uh, there was a spill over but uh, so therefore uh, a very very distinctive uh, increase in uh, adoption is uh, indicated by uh, you know the procurement and the opportunities that came up last year uh, this year again we expect that uh, th- there may be more rounds of such uh, activity happening because like i mentioned the uh, depth of which depth at which the technology is penetrated right now is very very uh, early stages for our forces so there is adequate headroom in terms of growth as far as the technology uh, penetration and uh, technology area is concerned but and it can give us sense that what was the total bid that you placed in fi 21 22 and 23 any any numbers so, so there was there was one so it was also part of our uh, you know report uh, the one latest report in our uh, rhp uh, where the government had uh, cleared a budget of about 88 million dollars from a uh, procurement standpoint uh, for uh, various uh, drone programs and uh, we saw uh, you know tenders for uh, hundreds and even one opportunity was for 1000 drones as well which was uh, you know released last year so fairly large uh, you know procurement was in place last year so these are some of the uh, indicators in terms of the size of what those opportunities would have entailed okay and which will be the year uh, where uh, uh, idea port will be making matlab um, a decent contribution or a some small contribution for my export market so this year we will see uh, the beginnings of the same but next year onwards we will start seeing uh, meaningful contributions okay uh, the last question from my side uh, is it possible to give some uh, in this 94 crores of revenue which you have done for uh, the current quarter 
what was the capacity utilization and uh, how many number of drones you would have sold uh, so we are currently capacity utilization uh, like was uh, suggested in one of the previous questions as well sorry, remains high as we did in the um can't hear me clearly really? uh, my voice is not audible is it yeah is it audible now yes 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 sure so uh, like i said the uh, capacity utilization remains high as we build inventories for subsequent deliveries uh, in terms of uh, number of drones uh, it's a guidance we are not uh, currently uh, providing okay thanks thank you okay all the best thank you Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Gaurav Utrani from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Hi, I'm Audible. Yes. Hi, Ankit. Hi, Gaurav. Uh, so, just wanted to ask one of question. Uh, sorry, Gaurav. There's some disturbance coming from your phone. Can you use your handset mode, please? Is it fine now? Yes. Yes, I wanted to check like what is the spillover revenue in one queue we have booked from FY twenty three? If you can just highlight the number. for that uh, on the defense again uh, please uh, what is the spillover revenue we have booked in one queue uh, from fy23 so just if you can highlight the number on the defense side is there any spillover revenue we have booked in one queue from fy23 yeah so uh, because uh, you know the delivery timelines for uh, some of the opportunity is particular opportunity for the switch uav that we delivered was uh, basically uh, timed in the quarter one of this year we were building inventory for the same last year and we uh, got the uh, all the inspections done cleared and we eventually delivered it in the uh, first quarter so that's one of the spillover opportunities in that one sense okay so any uh, quantum like number you can highlight like what in million or number of drones but currently we are not giving that specific guidance uh, Okay, no worries. And uh, second question is on the like, what is the amount we have capitalized during the quarter? If we uh, combine both, say, for employee ex expenses or other expenses from this, uh, what is the capitalization we have done in one queue? Yeah, so about uh, okay, capitalization. capitalization. So yeah. see, balance sheet numbers obviously we are not disclosing at this moment. Uh, we can subsequently probably talk about it. Yeah. So okay, thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you. I now hand the hand the conference over to Mr. Ashish Shah from JM Financial for closing comments. Yeah, thank you. So, on behalf of JM Financial, I'd like to thank all the participants for attending this call. Also, a big thank you to the management for letting us uh, you know, host the call. Uh, any closing comments from you, Ankit and Vipul, before we end the call? Sure. Uh, uh, thanks a lot for hosting this call. Uh, to gm financials and uh, you know the drone industry in india is considered a sunshine industry because of the tremendous growth potential and the potential for transformation both in india and globally the indian drone sector has witnessed a fairly increased adoption across sectors and with the expected growth rate of more than 18% over the next 5 years i think it's a very very promising opportunity that we are tracking and the government's regulatory framework and policies have been evolving to facilitate that integration of drones into the economy being the market leader we would continue to play a significant role in shaping the industry's growth through our innovative solutions technology expertise and commitment to addressing the unique challenges of this dynamic field with a proven track record and strong presence in the defense and security sectors as well as the civil sector we are a trusted partner in this rapidly evolving drone industry and would continue with the hard work going forward thanks uh, ashish thank you thank you on behalf of jm financial that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines